The Jewish comedians who entertained in the Catskills embraced their Jewishness, playing to Jewish audiences and cracking Jewish jokes. The Jewish Americans who created the movie business aimed their films at a mainstream audience, creating an imaginary America where Jews barely existed. How do you do? Good morning. I'm Betsy Booth. Won't you come in? One of Hollywood's greatest hits was the story of a teenage boy named Andy Hardy. You're Andy Hardy, aren't you? Uh huh. I live right next door. The Andy Hardy films were fairy tale visions of small town life in America. Well, you go right on. Fantasies of a Jewish immigrant. Louis B. Mayer. Mayer was one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. Born desperately poor, the son of a junk metal dealer, he was like most of the other men who had come to dominate movie making in the 1920s. Immigrant Jews who were called the Hollywood moguls. Adolf Zucker, Carl Lemley, William Fox, Samuel Goldman, and the Warner Brothers. Tough, ambitious men, most of them from impoverished families, determined to succeed in a business which began on the margins of American economic life. The movies were slightly disreputable. They required very little in the way of capital. Jews could go in and define this as theirs because they didn't have to compete with anybody. Non-Jews who considered themselves a little on the genteel side wouldn't want to get their hands dirty with this anyhow. They actually created a whole new industry. And because it was the beginning, because they were in a new country, they had no rules. And they could make the rules as they went along. Mayer's company, MGM, became known for its roaring lion, framed by the Latin slogan, Ars Gratia Artis, art for art's sake. But art was hardly on Mayer's mind. He created a studio more extravagant than all the others. With the highest budgets, the richest take at the box office, and more stars he liked to boast than there are in the heavens. Many of the big Hollywood stars changed their names. Isser Danielovich Dembski became Kirk Douglas. Emmanuel Goldberg, Edward G. Robinson. Betty Joan Persky, Lauren Bacall. Bernie Schwartz, Tony Curtis. It stunned me to realize that some of the movie stars that I love so much were actually Jewish. But nobody ever said they were. They weren't supposed to be. Change your names. Freddie Roman is my stage name. My real name was Fred Kirshenbaum. I grew up in, in Queens. We all changed our names because in order to Americanize it to make us more acceptable to the mainstream. This presents So Jutastic. Bernie 
Anthony Schwartz becomes Tony Curtis. Andrew Dice Clay was Andrew Clay Silverstein? He made up Dice? Oh, that's wrong. Robert Zimmerman becomes Bob Dylan. Robert Zimmerman? I would have accepted you for who you were. If your music good, you could be Zimmerman. Eugene Horowitz becomes Michael Landon. <laughs> Michael Landon, the dad from Little House on the Prairie, which, by the way, shared with the world a lot of Christian sentiments. Jew, big Jew. Eugene, oh, interesting. <laughs> Taking a stage name has been, and still is, a huge part of being Jewish in Hollywood. Jonathan Stewart Leibowitz shortened his name to John Stewart, and Natalie Hirschlag became Natalie Portman. Don't forget Hollywood. After all, the Jews run it, don't they? There's no denying the fact that the Jews invented Hollywood, and the Jews to this day still predominate in Hollywood. Why is it? The serious answer is... The Jewish tradition places a very high value on education. A lot of our people got college educations, started businesses, and succeeded. The cheap explanation is that we're the chosen people. What's the point in being God's chosen people if you're not going to end up controlling the media? Life is good and that's good I Let me just say that I'm glad that Jews run Hollywood, because why do you think I'm on TV right now? Because I'm funny? Barely. Because I'm Jewish. The hip hop world is loaded with people of the Jewish persuasion. Ah! Which begs the question why aren't you so crunk? We love the hip hop. Seriously, we cannot get enough. What's the first thing rappers say? Yo. Yo is just oi spelled backwards. Jews have been a huge part of the rap world right from the very beginning. Jews in the record business is an old, old story, but from the moment rap emerged from the black community, there was a preponderance of Jewish executives who helped usher it into the mainstream. One of the earliest Jewish rap visionaries of the mid-80s was Def Jam Records co-founder Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin is a genius who was making music that was just so ahead of his time. He's an innovator. He was always raw. He was always, do it the way you feel it. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't afraid to take chances. I'm not trying to find great new stars. I'm just being true to what I like. Only a couple of times I was sitting in our go, hold on, wait a minute. What is this white Jewish kid trying to tell me how to do my rap thing? He's Jewish. You don't know nothing about the hood. That's not where I rap. It was just an interesting cross-pollinization of cultures. We did it, and look what happened. He was right. The most powerful guy in the hip-hop business would be Leo Cohen, who was Russell's partner in Def Jam, who headed up the Universal Music Group and now is the chairman of Warner Brothers. I'm considered a very Jewish person in this business, but rap was going to be successful with or without me or the series of other Jewish people that were involved. We always said this about Leo. He was the coach. Leo would stand on the side of the stage and say, Go kill him, guys! You can do it! You guys are incredible! I love you! But the influential Jews in early rap went way beyond Rick and Leo. You gotta wonder if it was a coincidence that so many of the early independent rap labels were established by Jewish business people. You have a lot of these people working behind the scenes, and the question is why? We never really identified it as, hey, we're Jews or we're blacks working together. It was just, you know, we're this creative bunch of people that appreciate the music and artistry that is hip hop. The connection with Jews and hip hop is this. We're not afraid to take chances. They keep it real. It's America, so you know, we got a little Jewish, they got a little black, it's all good.